You know what a lot of people have been asking me lately? A lot of people have been, you know, talking to me and been like, hey, do you think Ben Affleck was a good Batman? And I look at them and I'm like, honestly, I think Bale is the best Batman because he is the most realistic one. And I understand it's a rich guy in a cape fighting bad guys. And in real life, you know, Bill Gates and Jeffrey Bezos aren't, you know, probably going out and putting on a cape and fighting bad guys. But it's a possibility. You know, I, I don't think Brandon Routh was that bad as Superman. I mean, he wasn't good, but... What was the best movie in the DC Extended Universe? Suicide Squad, obviously. David Ayer's movie is phenomenal. And you know how I know that? Because it only took me about five or six watches to really start loving it. Dude, I fucking hated Thor The Dark World. I mean, I never actually saw it, but I fucking hated Thor The Dark World. Here's a hot take. I think The Dark Knight is the greatest superhero movie ever made. That's not a hot take. Well, then I got a hot take for you. I think the Jack Nicholson was a terrible Joker. Do I really believe that? No, I don't, but I wanted I wanted a hot take. So there you go. Hey man, I think Hela was the best villain in the entire MCU. I mean, she was strong, she was powerful, you understood her motivation. I mean, yeah, I have a thing for Kate Blanchett, but that's not the point. I'll throw that in my face. I'm not ashamed. Look, I think that Captain Marvel is the best movie in the MCU. Why? Because I don't want to piss off Brie Larson. All right, and I feel like she's upset with me. No, we've never met. That's what. That's why it's so weird. Black Widow or The Suicide Squad? Honestly, man, I think Black Widow is gonna be a better movie and fuck, man, Scarlett Johansson's gonna make so much money at the box office. I think Christian Bale should come back to doing Batman. I got no faith in Robert Patterson. Look, if you're having a hard time understanding Tenet, just watch it once regularly and then watch it twice backwards. It clears everything up. Wait a minute, are you talking about soccer right now? What the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you talking about sports right now? Honestly, dude, I'm still waiting for Supergirl and Batman to get it on. I feel the chemistry, I feel the sexual tension. Let's get out of Bat Condom and fuck already. Dude, Venom is a good movie, okay? Did you get to the part with the female Venom? All right, I'm going to fuck war, marry Dawn, Kill Rides of the Planet of the Apes. Dude, Aquaman is the best of all the DC characters, okay? I'll give you 12 reasons why. Jason Momoa's abs. Look, dude, I don't mean to be rude. And I do agree with you that at times, Christopher Nolan's movies can be a bit difficult to hear. But I also think that maybe you should get your fucking ears checked. You know what? We've been over this time and time again, and I'm getting fucking annoyed with you, Kyle. The dress was blue and black. It was not white and gold. I'm sorry, did you just say that your favorite Christopher Nolan movie is Insomnia? <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to uh, take that back. Oh no, I'm not kidding. Yeah, uh, Dark Knight, Interstellar, Inception, Batman Begins, The Prestige, Memento, Dunkirk, Tenet, Insomnia is the one that you go with. Here's an idea, unfriend me on Facebook, don't ever speak to me again, I hate you and I hope you die. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> good, good, thank you. Um, I just wanted to call and uh, I wanted to talk to you about potentially doing a project together. Uh, I've been watching a lot of your stuff on YouTube, a lot of your original songs and some of your covers, and I just gotta tell you, um, Faith, you're awesome. Yeah, no, I, I, I really, really enjoy it. And I was wondering if you would perhaps want to do something together, like a cover or maybe write an original song or something like that. Great. Yeah, no, take care as well. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, so quick backstory. A dedicated fan just gave me a movie, the new Christopher Nolan movie. I don't even know if anybody knows about it. I know that there were some reviews included in the box that'll help me kind of understand how this movie is doing critically. I haven't 
read any of them yet, but I really, really appreciate whoever dropped this off. I'm so grateful that you enjoy my movie reviews, and I haven't even been doing them for that long, so this, this really means a lot. So thank you so much. But anyway, Christopher Nolan has a new project. That is awesome. Ecolipsium is a new film directed by Christopher Nolan, and it stars Christian Bale, Tom Hardy, Killian Murphy, Michael Caine, Kenneth Branagh, Marion Cotillard, Anne Hathaway, Matthew McConaughey, Al Pacino, Guy Pearce, Guy Ritchie, and Guy Fieri, and it follows a group of scientists who discover a way to time travel. Now this leads them back to the First World War, where they meet Christian Bale, who is a man suffering from short-term memory loss, and he is trying to piece together an investigation of his wife's murder, his wife played by Marion Cotillard, who was murdered by a time traveling magician played by Michael Caine. Now we as the audience we know that, but we but Christian Bale, he he doesn't know that. So it's kind of some dramatic irony there, which is kind of neat and interesting. Christian Bale soon starts to suspect that it's Killian Murphy who murdered his wife, but Killian Murphy didn't kill his wife. He only killed Christian Bale's brother, who's played by Al Pacino. And then Matthew McConaughey comes into the film and he is a protege of both Christian Bale and Michael Caine, so he's trying to become a time-traveling magician, but also a protege of Christian Bale because Christian Bale is also a superhero named the Ratman. I, I don't think I mentioned this earlier. Christian Bale also, as well as having short-term memory loss, he's also a superhero in the First World War named the Ratman, so he's really cool and really gritty, and he has a costume that looks very similar to the Batman, but... He is playing the Ratman, so it's a totally different thing. And while this is going on, Guy Fieri, who plays the lead scientist, and he's phenomenal in this movie. This is like Oscar caliber acting from Guy Fieri, so I love it. He is going around trying to find a way to get Back to the Future, and I think this movie actually might cross over with Back to the Future. There's also a plot going on in the far, far future with Tom Hardy and Kenneth Branagh, where Tom Hardy is playing... Kenneth Branagh's dad. Even though Tom Hardy is significantly younger, he is playing his dad. And it's not like they like aged him or any way, in any way or anything like that. He looks the age he is now. And he is the father of Kenneth Branagh. And he's reading to him in bed, like in The Princess Bride. And Kenneth Branagh is playing a six-year-old boy. But he's such a good actor that it just works. And he's reading the story about the Rat Man and all this stuff with Christian Bale and Michael Caine. But then they soon realize that Marion Cotillard, the wife, might actually still be alive but in the future, and they're in space. So as you might have guessed, uh, this movie is a little bit confusing. It's, uh, there's a lot going on in it. It's constantly changing perspectives, time periods, you know, there's alternate realities, there's all this kind of stuff. It's a very different movie. There are so many different people in this film, and it's quite long. It's about five and a half hours long. So it's, it's definitely a lot to ask, but as usual, it is worth it. This film is directed by Christopher Nolan, so you are going to get a phenomenal film no matter what. This guy creates greatness. No matter what he's doing, he is always creating something unique, original, interesting. It's an enthralling film, and honestly, this movie is a lot of fun to watch. I mean, I, I didn't really have a lot of fun watching it. It was actually kind of a painful movie to sit through but I've seen it about four times now and well okay I'll be honest it, it actually gets a little bit more painful to sit through it's because it's so it's just so good and there's so much of it that I don't think that the human brain can actually like take in that much greatness Christopher Nolan is a god that's all I'm saying. This movie is just, it's its honestly, it's its a really good one. It, I don't think it's better than Inception, but its it's close. The main thing is that this film has an effect on you. It doesn't really matter if you enjoy watching it or not, because, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if you enjoyed watching it. So I'm going to give Ecolipsium a, out of 10, I'd probably give it like a, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I don't really want to rate this movie right now because I don't, I don't think I've really... I feel like this is a movie you gotta see a few times. I feel like this movie deserves a little bit more. There's a lot going on in this movie. I want to make sure I get all of it before I start, you know, attaching labels and criticism to this movie. I don't really think that's fair. So, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it once or twice more and then I'm gonna come back to this and review it a little bit more fluidly and, and give you a better idea of kind of where I sit with it because I, I just think that's kind of the right thing to do. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you. I'll edit this together so it's like me right afterwards. Stay groovy, watch a movie. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am back. Since recording my first part of the video yesterday, 
I have actually seen this movie about seven more times. It's definitely a different movie for sure, and I can I can genuinely and honestly say that I'm really liking this movie a lot. I'm not absolutely loving it yet, but I think once I see it another, you know, 12, 13, 14 times, I'm really going to be loving this movie. I'm going to be in love with it, just like I am with every other Christopher Nolan movie, except for Insomnia. <laughs> Except for Insomnia. I gotta say too, I've been reading through some of the reviews. I'm really not getting them. I think this is a fantastic movie. He's a genius, okay? He is a genius and you gotta see this one on the big screen. It's a really, really, really epic movie to see. I've been going to an auditorium and renting it out so that I can see it on the big screen. That's kind of what you gotta do with this movie. It's, it's different for sure. It's a very different movie, but seeing it's just surround you and all of that 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 really makes the movie a lot better and i gotta say too i counted the subplots in this movie and i'm still counting because i don't think i got all of them but there's got to be at least 18 subplots in this movie you know no filmmaker would ever do that or try to take that on there have been other movies that have attempted to have more than like 18 subplots like love actually or valentine's day or spider-man 3 but christopher nolan is a genius and he can he can can make it work you know this guy this guy knows what the hell he's doing but it's a lot and it's a lot to ask of the person and you know what honestly this is a journey this movie is a journey because you got to watch it enough times to try and understand and figure out what it means you know this is real art you got to dig you got to find out what it means you you might not be able to enjoy it the first time and that's okay you got to keep going you got to keep watching it what does it mean do i know what it means i don't know what it means my journey is just beginning i really am starting to like this movie a lot and i i can't wait to be loving it i just i can't wait to keep watching it and watching it and watching it and uh i love it i i really like this movie a lot hey everyone i just saw ecolipsium another probably about another 17 times since the last time we spoke and i do need to say oh my god i am loving this movie i think it is phenomenal it, it might be his best movie in my opinion better than inception definitely better than interstellar i, I will say i i am a little disappointed that there there are some still some negative reviews out there i get it it's a confusing movie you want it to kind of be a little bit more you know concrete and whatnot but you do you do kind of need to to work a little harder to to make sure that you understand this movie all right you need to kind of put in the extra effort that's what this movie demands and that's why i like it so much now to be totally honest the theory for this movie i'm, I'm not certain what it is yet i'm a little confused still but that's fine i get it it's it's a it's a tough a tough thing to crack but we're gonna get there eventually it's gonna be good it's gonna be good i'm enjoying the movie i'm enjoying this journey that i'm on and uh yeah no i'm definitely uh if you don't like this movie you're a fucking moron <laughs> I understand. If you don't like this movie, it's your fault. Wish people would give it more of a chance, though. I will say that. Hey, everyone. I just got back from seeing Ecolipsium for the 57th time. That is the number I have been counting. And I gotta say, I'm, I'm really not understanding these negative reviews. I think people just want to hate on a genius. You know, like Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan knows what the hell he's doing, okay? He is a master of the craft. He is the best, okay? And it's a real shame that people are so lazy and they just want to see light popcorn entertainment all the time. Objectively speaking, Ecolipsium is a masterpiece. And no one can argue with me on that. And you know what? I'm finding out of all the reviews that I've been reading that the people who don't like this movie are the ones who are not seeing it in theaters, okay? Maybe if it was on a bigger screen, you would be able to understand more. Does the movie have flaws? No, but I can see how one might think it does. It's a shame that people just want to see Fast and Furious and just light popcorn entertainment with Vin Diesel going, uh, family so it's i'm i'm sick of it i'm really i'm really sick of it okay the, if maybe if you guys actually had a brain and could turn it on then maybe you would enjoy this movie it's not about the movie itself sometimes it's about the way that you see it so if you're having a bad day don't go to the theater and watch christopher nolan and then blame him because your marriage isn't working out all right <laughs> also just a side note leave your theories in the comments down below i want to hear them i know what the movie is about i know what's going on obviously <laughs> i can't really get into it because you guys don't <laughs> you don't understand it you wouldn't understand it so it 
doesn't matter, but I want to hear what you guys think is happening in this movie because I'm really curious what you think is happening. I know what's happening, but I'm curious what you guys think. I obviously know what's happening, though. I seri I know what's happening, all right? So don't question it. So I think I was a little harsh last time. Since the last time I've reviewed it, I've seen it probably about 30 more times. And I can honestly say that I'm starting to like it. All right, not love it, but I'm starting, I'm starting to appreciate and like the movie. And I wasn't before. And it's not the only thing I lied about. I also, I also stopped renting out movie theaters to see it because they didn't want me renting out anymore. I didn't, I didn't really have a choice. So I just, I just. I can't keep doing this to myself because I think the movie is okay. I think it's, it it's, I think Christopher Nolan may have bitten off a little more than he can chew. And I think that's okay. We all make mistakes. We're all human, even geniuses. Um, the film isn't as bad as Insomnia. Oh my, oh, don't even get me started on that. But I don't think the film is, is his best. I also don't think I know what's going on. I also... I don't know if I'm really certain that I know what's going on in his movie. And I feel bad about that because why should I criticize someone's work when I don't even understand what they're trying to say? I, I don't think that that's, that's right. So... Excuse me. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. Really good. Took the week off work, just kind of chilling at home, just uh, watching some movies, you know, getting some pers you know it's been a it's been a crazy week uh I saw the new Christopher Nolan movie and I've just been this I'm trying to I'm not quite sure what it's about yet but I'm, I'm getting closer and closer to it so uh yeah I know but we're just gonna we're gonna keep watching it until I uh until I get it so uh yeah but it, it's good I like it quite a bit uh what are what are you up to I mean I had to release that video that, oh, what is that? What are you drinking? It's a, uh, it's a little mixture I made. It's a, uh, it's coffee and Mountain Dew and Red Bull and a couple of scoops of brown sugar. It tastes quite awful, but it's starting to grow on me a little bit. It keeps me wide awake though, which is, which is good. Matt, when's the last time you slept? Please stop. Thank you. Ugh. Thank you. Oh my god. Well, last time I slept, well, I actually just woke up. You know, I had I had a nice. How long was it? Fifth, 
50, 55 minutes, nice 55 minutes of sleep. That was really good. What have you been, what have you been doing? What's, what's going on in your life? Um, not much. I mean, I put out that video that you were going to help me with. Sorry. Are you yelling right now? Am I yelling? Yeah. I hear, I hear no. yelling and screaming. Oh, might just be the headaches. Getting a lot of those lately. Did you maybe forget about something? Forget about something. Um, that we had planned. You know, you know what? There was like a scene in the Christopher Nolan movie that I wanted to note. And I think I forgot to write it down. Let me actually just like, oh, oh that legs just cracked. Okay. I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking about the YouTube video we were supposed to work on. YouTube video we're supposed to work on? What? Yeah, the song? That song? Yeah, I, I, I haven't written it yet, but I'm going to do it like next week. So um, we'll basically, well, we still got like a month, right? To do it. Still got like a month before we do, we're doing it. I'm really excited though. It's going to be good to do like a, like a song collaboration, by the way. So I'm, I'm pumped. Dude, I haven't talked to you in three months. <laughs> three months. What, what are you talking about? Three months. It's been three months. It hasn't. What, it's not been three months. What day do you think it is? What month do you think it is? What day do I think it is? I think it's uh, Tuesday. And um, is that right? Is it Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I got yeah. that right. Yeah. And then, um, uh, I think it is the 16th of April. I need you to look at your phone right now. All right. How I don't know how you got it to say you, July on my phone, but that's that's nice work. That's actually cool how you did that. How did you do that though? That's cool. How long do you think it's been since we talked? We talked like last week, didn't we? No, we didn't. When did we talk last then? Three months ago. Three months ago. That's yeah, insane. we were planning to do that song. Look. We were planning to do the song. We are still planning to do the song. The song is going to happen still. It's going to happen very soon. We're doing it in like a month, we said. We're going to do it early May. It's only, what, how did you, seriously though, how did you get it to say July on my laptop? I didn't. It's July. And I already did the song. I had to do it. I had to put it out. <sighs> You're fucking with me. It's only been a week. I know it's been a crazy week, but it, it's only been a fucking week. Also, I'm sorry. Do you think I snuck into your room, into your house, to change the date on your phone? For what reason? I'm going to be totally honest with you. I've seen this movie so many times. I think my brain is a little cooked right now. So forgive my my reason and logic. It's probably a little strained. Look, it's just, I'm really sorry. I didn't I thought you liked Tenet. What? Oh, I did. I, I love Tenet when it came out, but Tenet's kind of old news. The best movie of 2020, but the best movie of 2021 is Ecolipsium, the new uh, Christopher Nolan masterpiece. Yeah. What? Ecolipsium. It's his new movie that he did. It's got like Christian Bale in it and Matthew McConaughey and Christian Bale, or I already said him, and Michael Caine and... Um, Guy Fieri is in it, and he's really, really, really good. I'm sorry. Guy Fieri is in Guy it. Guy Fieri is in it. Yeah, he makes Guy Fieri is in a Christopher movie. Nolan movie? He is, yeah. He plays, like, he plays, a, he's really good in it. He plays, like, a, um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you call it? Like, what's the, oh, wait, wait, let me guess, it? let me guess. Does he, like, is he, like, like, he's in the restaurant, and he, like, goes into different restaurants, and he, like, watches them cook their food? Yeah. <sighs> That's him. Cool. That's him. So you've yeah. seen the movie. So you've seen. No, I've seen fucking diners, drive-ins, and dives. Someone gave you a mashup. Okay, they they mashed up every Christopher Nolan movie, and for shits and giggles, I guess added diners, drive-ins, and dives, and passed it off as the new Christopher Nolan movie. And you've been watching it for three months. When was the last? What? There's no, no new movie. Look it up. 
Ecolipsium is a fucking movie. It is. I haven't been on the site because, you know, people are giving the movie crap. Where did you get it from? Where did you buy it? Well, it was left on my doorstep by a fan in a box. What? What? So you say it out loud. I understand how crazy it sounds. Yeah. What did the box say? It said, here's the new Christopher Nolan movie. Check it and out. And you opened it. Yeah. I, I could have been like a Christopher Nolan. I was, of course, I'm going to open it. God. <sighs> well, thank God it wasn't a bomb. That could have been really bad. Okay. Besides all of that, Matt, your family is terrified. Your family has no idea what's going on. They don't know what's happened to you. Why haven't you been talking to them? That's not fair. They're scared. They reached out to me, which tells you how scared they are. Why haven't you been talking to them? Three months, they don't hear from you. Why, why haven't you been talking to them? Why haven't you reached out? What's going on? It's my, it's my dad. He doesn't get it. Doesn't get what? He doesn't get my love of Christopher Nolan. He says, you know, hey, I saw Interstellar last time, last Christmas. I go to visit him. He says, hey, I saw Interstellar. I said, oh, yeah, what did you think of it? And he said, honestly, I didn't really like it. He says, I don't get why you do either. I don't get what it is. Matt, why, why do you love Christopher Nolan so much? I just, what is it? He made Inception. It was really good. That's it? Oh, God, Matt. Matt, you're throwing your life away over a hypothetical movie. You've lost three months. Do you have somewhere you can go? Do you have someone you can talk to who can would I stay with you? Isn't that a great time? What about your family? I just wanted to understand the movie. I just wanted to know what was going on. You, you can't understand the movie because the movie doesn't exist. It was someone playing a really cruel prank that somehow worked. Matt, you gotta stop. You had to have edited it though, right? Christopher Nolan, maybe he's the one who's playing the joke on me, right? Oh, honey, no, no. This was just some sick joke that you fell so hard <laughs> for. <laughs> okay, I think, I think that you should get rid of everything Christopher Nolan in your house. Yeah. Start clean, get somewhere safe where you're not tempted. Yeah. Thank you for being here. And um, maybe when all of this is, is over and I throw away everything Christopher Nolan, maybe we can do that collaboration together. Fuck no. No. Absolutely fucking not.
So let's talk about Michael Douglas in the game. So this is personally one of my favorite David Fincher movies. I think Michael Douglas is awesome in this film. You also got Sean Penn, Deborah Cara Unger, and... Uh, and anyway, uh, I always thought that this movie really worked. I thought it was a really, a really fun thriller. A really interesting, kind of disturbing thriller. And I, I really, I really could always... I could always appreciate the fact that it had the balls to kind of go with a bit of a different ending. And, you know, a lot of people find the ending very disappointing, very kind of a, much a letdown. And... How are you, Matt? I don't want to make this video. But I have to. In the future, time travel becomes possible. And I know what you're thinking. What a lazy way to explain this. I don't know how it worked. I don't know how it happened. I don't know the technology. I don't know what happened. I don't know how they made it possible. But time travel is possible. And I have brought this tape back so that you can watch it. Or tape or DVD, whatever the hell you want to call it. Whatever's on, maybe it ended up on streaming one day. I have no idea. But this is me telling you something very important. And something that right now I know that you don't want to hear. You see, I've learned one thing. And that's that time is fixed, okay? There is absolutely no way to change the past or change the future. It is set in stone. You are stuck with it, no matter what. No matter how hard you try. You're going to realize something too as you get older. Is that this life, it has absolutely no meaning. There is no purpose to being here. Absolutely none. And being your future self, I'm giving you a purpose. And I know what you're going to do. You're going to try and run away. And you're going to try and ignore it. And you're going to try and act like, no, you know what? It's fine. We can just pretend like everything is fine. Nothing matters. Everything's just fun. Just lighthearted. Deep down, you and I both know that's not the life you want to live. There is one thing that we both know that you really want to do, and that is put down people who don't agree with your opinion. I love doing it. It's my favorite thing. And that's the meaning of life, is to make sure that my opinion is heard, even if it doesn't make any sense. You want to know who put that box on your doorstep? It was me, buddy. I put it there for you to find. Because I was giving you a purpose in this life. Yeah. Is it a mashup of all of Christopher Nolan's movies? With some diners, drive-ins, and dives mixed in? Absolutely it is. But I'm giving you something to work towards. I'm giving you a purpose. You're going to look in the mirror one day and you're just going to realize you've done nothing. You've done absolutely nothing with your life. I'm giving you a chance to do something. Hello everyone. Join us today on Breaking News Canada as we talk to Connor O'Reilly about the invention of time travel. Mr. O'Reilly, please tell us a little bit about your invention. Well, 
I've been working on it for a while, and today I was having a taco. I dropped it on the ground, and I thought, man, this would be a really great time to try out my invention. And it happened to work. I got to go back in time as far back as I wanted to. So I went back, and I tried to stop my parents' divorce, but it didn't work out. In fact, I just made them break up sooner. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'm giving you a chance to be someone and to make something of yourself. Who cares if the movie is real or not? But when it's all said and done, and you're sitting around, you're bored out of your mind, trying to find a job, trying to find some way to feel satisfied, you're going to wish you had that movie. But no, go ahead. Go on with your life and, uh, do the best that you can. I'm rooting for you. beside you the sun